Edmonton on the floor. And there you see that double left hook and the fight is pretty much over right there. Very powerful, David Tour. Gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome 
to the Texas Station Gambling Hall and Hotel in North Las Vegas, Nevada for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by America Presents in association with Cedric Kushner Promotions along with Showtime Championship Boxing, Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers and station casinos, the leading entertainment company in Las Vegas. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the president, Hiawatha Knight, supervisor, Daryl Peoples, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Gonham, commissioners Amy Ayub, Glenn Corrano, Dr. Flip Pomansky, and Dr. Luther Mack. The executive director, Mark Ratner. Our three judges scoring this bout from ringside, all of them from Las Vegas, Nevada, Carol Castellano, Dwayne Ford, and Art Lurie. And the third man of the ring, our referee in charge of this bout, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, an IBF elimination heavyweight attraction, scheduled 12 rounds of boxing. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Texas station, it's showtime. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing red trunks with white trim, and fighting out of South Auckland, New Zealand. He weighed in at 247 pounds, with a record of 37 wins, 2 losses. He has 32 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting IBF number 5 ranked heavyweight in the world, known as the Tua Man, introducing David Tua. opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 12-round attraction, wearing white trunks with blue lettering, fighting out of it representing Chicago, Illinois. He weighed in at 223 pounds. His record stands at 39 wins, 3 losses, with 30 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the IBF number 3 heavyweight contender, introducing Daniel Doc Nicholson. Once again, Joe Cortez, our referee in charge. All right, gentlemen, we won all the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Guys, these trunks here, they're a little high. Punches here. A little, they're good here. Right here. These are a little high. Okay, guys, give me a clean fight. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Lewis at 247, he does look more cut and sizzled tonight for Donnell Nicholson. And no secret to his style, likes to start fast, heavy-handed, with the aggressive hooking, swarming style, pick up, pick up, jam, and the big and the horse of Nicholson.
team. I think for a guy this short, I don't know his job. He's going to have to do that too. He'll have to gauge speed right away. Very important. And although he couldn't against Lewis, Tua likes to apply pressure and not step back. As we can see here, he has the one punch tail power, but as he fouled out, can't always be
Future of boxing will uh, be fighting here on Showtime. Let's turn to Jeff first. You're two and all. Are you concerned at all that you might be being rushed along a little bit too quickly, young in your career? No, I don't think I'm being rushed along. Um, as long as we get, you know, some good stiff opponents in there, I'm gonna continue to do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna train hard all the time. I train up in Big Bowl with my coach Roger Butler. Butler, so I'm ready for anything comes near me. And how about you, Lamia? ask you about the pressure that you might feel trying to live up to the expectations of, after coming off the Olympics. Well, it, w it was pretty tough first uh, uh, trying to come up uh, from the last. So it was, just, it was just basically trying to get back on the horse. And it just felt great having that first win and all the attention that I Oh, 
You understand? Let's go. Tua, I believe frustrated right now. He's using the elbows of Tua. Eddie Mashaf and Mohamed says Tua is a one-dimensional fighter with the left hook. Hey, if you stop him, he's going to hit him with the other hand. Tua, I really like Tua.
Come on, come on, come on. Sit back, sit back, sit back. Okay. What for you got? What for you? Come on, go ahead. What's up? For the most part, the left hook, the two, and the one. Right. 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 Right.
on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's, uh, I think, at a stage where he's trying to end it on the top. And that's a mistake, especially against a boxer who can get out of the hand. He got out of the hand way so quickly. Nicholson is very free to fall.
Keep your chin separated from the body. Yeah, tuck your chin in. And look at it again. Watch how high he's got his head. The fans reacting on the big screen, saying it. Last one. Look how high his head is. Right on the chin. Slush. Perfect. Rest up by David Tua. And David Tua back in the wind caught it by the ball. After suffering the loss to Lennox Lewis. Let's get the official numbers from Bring it out to Jimmy Lennox Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 34 seconds in round number six. The winner by way of knockout, the Tua man, David Tua. Thank you very much, Steve. David, uh, how would you assess your performance tonight? Oh, what can I say? I got lucky. <laughs> well, to a lot of fans, to a lot of fans, it may appear like that because it seemed rather lackluster up until that hook in the fifth round. <laughs> well, first of all, and, uh, and foremost, I uh, give glory and victory to God Almighty for helping me out with the fight, and I thank everybody uh, from the trainers. Uh, Dan, everybody, America percent everybody, I mean, you name it, Team Tua for, for uh, uh, putting in the effort and disciplining themselves for getting me in great shape for this fight. Yeah, well, I mean, what can I say? I mean, uh, I expect it's going to be a tough fight because uh, uh, the simple fact that uh, Danal Nickerson uh, has got the style of, of uh, Lennox Lewis, which gives me a lot of problems uh, in the title fight. But therefore, I had worked very, very hard uh, in the gym day in and day out with with no disrespect to Joe Moses, now Moses. And, uh, you know, he, he, he grinds me and he breaks me and rebuilds me every day. So I was ready for this fight. Before we look at the knockdowns, is it your assessment that you've improved? These big guys do give you a problem. The jab, the jab keeps you away, and, and, and it's hard for you to move in. Do you feel as though you have improved since you fought Lennox Lewis? Yes. I, I, I truly believe that it's, uh, it's a long time coming. A uh, hell of a learning experience from the Lewis fight where I've uh, got a new crew now with no disrespect to Ronnie Shields, but uh, yeah, I've been working very, very hard with Joe, uh, Kevin, uh, Marty, uh, Brian, I mean, you name it. I mean, you know, everybody plays a special part to get me prepared and ready f for tonight. Let's take a look at a couple of these knockdowns uh, right here, David. Uh, first in the fifth round, you described it as lucky. Here it is. <laughs> As my father always says, son, you got lucky. <laughs> oh, two minutes back. <laughs> and then in round six, uh, it, it, it seemed as though he couldn't get the cobwebs out, and it was just a matter of time. Was that your assessment? I think it was. Uh, it was only a matter of time. I mean, he was running for me, but I, uh, I didn't want to uh, get into a stage where I was trying to uh, leave too much with my punches, trying to and trying to get lucky. David, what do you think it's going to take from you to get the respect back from the boxing public who was pretty upset after the Lennox Lewis fight? Dan, what can they say, Dan? Hey, 
Jim, uh, and I know David has been saying it all along, we're going to earn it. We're going to earn it by fighting guys like Denell Nicholson, number three in the world. We want to go after every top ten guy right now and earn the right to fight for that world title again. Because the bottom line is, is that this is something that David was so disappointed in November 11th. We're not ashamed to say that we were disappointed, and we're not ashamed to say that we're going to overcome it and uh, and prove to the fans that uh, that we're going to go out there and show them that uh, that uh, we're going to give them a tremendous performance to climb back to the top again. Were you ashamed? Was I ashamed? I was beyond shame. I was devastated. I mean, uh, I mean, I was devastated not only for myself and my team, but I was devastated. I was devastated for the fan. And I was hurt for the fans. I mean, tonight I had to come out and win the heart to the fans, man. Because, you know, if it wasn't for them, David Tua, his career uh, wouldn't be where he's at today. And what will you do now, David? I got to go home and see my mother. In terms of your fighting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, I don't know right now. I just got to go back to the drawing board and uh, keep learning. Keep working hard. Congratulations tonight, Dave. Thank you, Showtime. Joe, thank you. Dan Goosen, thank you. All right. Back over to you, Steve. All right, Jim. Uh, KO round six, 34 seconds for uh, David Tua over number three, Donnell Nicholson. Let's give you some numbers at the time of this stoppage. The official ringside judges here at Texas 